start, can everybody see the harmonic scanner on my screen? Can anybody? Okay, thank you, Trace. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, cool. Let me get my headphones. I forgot I got my headphone joint set up. Okay, cool. So you can see it. All right, you guys. So before I even get into the harmonic scanner, right? First, before I get started, if I have anybody new to the harmonic scanner, can you just comment 55 in the comment bar? I want to see how many new people we have. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute just to mute these lines. Let me see. So if you're just getting in, I see James, your phone needs to be muted. James Cherry. James Cherry, if you could just mute your line. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen because I, I can't mute the lines when uh when I'm doing that. Okay. I see some numbers popping up. Let me see what y'all talking about. Okay. New 555. New and excited to learn. That's what I love. New and excited to learn. Okay. So we got a couple of um, new people and we got some veterans on here. So um, just give me some time to go over the basics with everybody so we can be on the same page. So before we even get into this, you guys, this is the harmonic scanner right here. If you go on the sides, these are different brokers. Some people like to trade. They like to, um, you know, they like to go with the broker they have. But at the essence of things, it doesn't matter which broker over here you're trading from. Um, it doesn't really matter. You know, different brokers, you know, different spread setups. Um, it just all depends on you. Normally what I do, I go through all of these to, to check out to see what the, um, the best trade is okay you got the 15 minute chart and then if you go here you got the hour the four hour and the day chart and it's the same all the way across so you may see you know your broker here and you may not um, but like I said it doesn't matter which one you uh, choose from so that's where you'll find your your different brokers and I'll be taking questions midway through so uh, if you have any questions don't worry I'll definitely uh, get to them okay you guys so the first thing we want to do is we want to do our trade setup. We got to know what this trade is looking like before we even get in it. Now, Stacy, if you could just mute your line, honey. Um, now, getting into this trade, you need to know a couple of things. And first and foremost, what we're going to use is we're going to use something called Bollinger Bands, you guys. The Bollinger Bands. So if you come right here, right here, if you, everybody sees that, and if you're just coming in, can you please mute your lines? Because I still hear a lot of feedback, and we want to make sure everybody is getting this information. So you're going to come here. You're going to go to Bollinger Bands, and you're going to make sure that you are putting your Bollinger Bands on here five times, you guys, five times, right? We're going to put this on five times. Now, you guys, this harmonic scanner is 87 to 90% accurate, you guys. You only got to take about 5% of your brain to figure this out. So the strategy that I'm about to show you is simple. It's not easy. It's not hard, but it's simple, right? So first and foremost, here are your Bollinger Bands. Let me show you how to do that again. You go to Indicator. You go here. You type in, you can just type in Bollinger Bands. It's going to come up. You're going to type on this five times. So I already did it, so I'm not going to do it again. But you would just click five times. After you do that, you'll notice, okay, you'll notice right here, you got the Bollinger Bands up here five times. One, two, three, four, and five, right? Okay, okay, cool, cool. All right, if anybody's just tuning in on my, uh, my uh, Facebook Live, I want you guys to see how me and the team, team get down with growing our money. So once you have this format up, you guys, you're going to go, I mean, this, these coordinates, this uh, Bolger Bands up, you're going to go to format. You're going to find format right here. You're going to enter in your coordinates, okay? And we'll speak about the coordinates and what they are and all of that in just a second. But I want you to pay attention to these numbers that I'm inputting. 
And if you can be so kindly, drop them in the chat bar for the rest of the team for the people just getting in. So the length is always going to be 50, you guys. The length is always going to be 50. And it's basically the measurement from the moving average line. And I'll tell you what the moving average line is in a second. So the length is going to be 50. Down here, you're going to put two. Okay, so we got 50 and we got two. Now, what I'm about to do right here is a beauty cosmetic. You don't have to do this beauty cosmetic like me, but I'm doing it because I like the charts to be clear. So you'll come over here to style, right? And I want y'all to see something really quick. Hold on. Let me go back to style. And I'm going to answer questions too midway. So, okay, cool. So I want y'all to pay attention to this line right here right here pay attention to it real quick let me show you what it's going on y'all see how that got dark i'm gonna show y'all again it's light it's right here okay it's dark right i want to move all of these you see this line right here before i changed it to dark it was light now i'm changing it to dark now i say this is a beauty cosmetic because you don't have to I'm doing this because I want to see these lines. I want to see this clear. I want to see this moving average line clear. I want to see this line clear. So that's why I did that. You don't have to do that part. But what you definitely do need to do is this input part, okay? So you're going to do the same across the board. You're going to go to format again. You're going to change the coordinate to 50. This time it's going to be 2.5, right? And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to change my style because that's, that's how I like to do it. I like to change my style up. All right, so same thing, 50, make sure you're writing this down, and three. And if you're paying attention to that pattern, you'll see it's two, 2.5, three, 3.5, four is going to be the next one. Oh, wait a minute, let me change my style. Change my style. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, all right, so once again, it's going to be 50, you guys. All right. This is going to be 3.5. Changing my style up, and I will take questions in just a second. All right, the next one, I'm going to change my style once again. Okay, now this is simple, you guys, simple. Okay, last one, 50 and then 4. Boom. We have now gotten to our trade setup. This is how we even start. We're starting to set up the trade. So before I go any further, I'm going to see if I have any questions. Um, and if you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the chat bar. And, um, okay, cool. Somebody put the coordinate. That's what I'm talking about. Teamwork is a dream work. So somebody said they can't hear the audio. It's probably because when you first came in, one second. Uh, one second, you guys. Somebody said they couldn't, they couldn't hear. Okay, so anybody have any questions before, before we go into the, the next part? If you have any questions, just put it in the chat bar. Please do not unmute yourself. Okay. I don't see anything right now. So let me see anything from the Facebook fam. Peace, peace, peace. Okay. I don't see anything. All right, you guys. So now we're going to move on to the, to the next half. So now that we have our Bollinger Bands up, you guys, there are three rules. Three rules, three simple little rules, you guys. Three simple little rules that... I follow before I get into this trade, you guys. Before we even get into this trade, we got our Bollinger Bands up, and it's looking cute. But wait a minute. There's a couple things we got to look at, right? So let me go ahead, and let me see if I got this saved. Please tell me I got this saved somewhere. Uh, Give me one second. Mm, harmonic scanner. Harmonic scanner. I might just got to rewrite it. Let me see. Uh, 
All right, it's all good. It's all good. I'm going to write it up there. It's all good. Okay, so the first rule, you guys, and I'm going to write it, and I want you to uh, to write this as well. Okay, so let's see. Rules. Three rules before trading. Okay. Oops. All right. So our first rule, and I'm gonna go over the rules. Just let me write them right now, and I'll explain to explain to you what they are. Um. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about this first rule really quick. Hope everybody can see that. Let's see if I can make it bold. Okay, so our first rule, before we even get into this trade family, before we even get in here, we want to make sure that price has, it has to enter the entry price point. So we want to make sure that price has entered the entry point, right? And so, look. We got one and we got two. If y'all see these green lines right here, you got one and you got two. Those are your entry points. Now, your price candle, make this big. Your price candle is this D candle. This is price. This is where price has begun, right? And so, Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you for putting the uh, three rules uh, in the chat bar for me because I'm actually going to copy, paste, and put it on here. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much, Goddess Shannon. So um, price has to enter two of the entry points, you guys. So as you can see, this green line right here, this price candle has entered through. The D has. It has it pushed, it had pushed through this first entry point. Now, it has two entry points, right? I feel like you can still do the trade on the first entry point, but you have a stronger confirmation when you see it pass through both of the entry points. So not to confuse you, price still has to enter the entry point, which is right here, which it has done. If you can see that D, it has kind of went through. But if you're able to get it at this, this, this second line, when you do have two entry points, that's like a, a even more of a strong confirmation. So let me just make sure I didn't lose anybody. Um, three rules. Okay, cool, cool. I'm going to go ahead and copy this rule right here so I don't have to write it again. So thank you, Shannon. All right. So that's the first rule, you guys. Price has to enter at least one of your entry points. Okay? So that's rule one. Confirm. So we're like, okay, all right. This may be a good trade. This may be a good trade. But hold up. Let's check out our second rule before we say it's a good trade, right? Because it's three rules. Not one, but three. So, okay. We'll go ahead and place this up here. She laid it out for us. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, cool. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. I see what happened. Let me delete that. All right. One thing, you guys, the, uh, you have to be patient with the harmonic scanner. You got to have patience with trading, period. But, you know, you just, you just got to really have patience with this harmonic scanner. Trading in general. Okay, so the next rule is price has to penetrate at least two of our Bollinger Bands. Go through at least two of our Bollinger Bands. Pro penetrate, go through, same thing. And these, these are our Bollinger Bands, you guys. Let me, um, let me see this little icon. Okay, boom. There's one, number one. I don't like the way that looks, though. Let me, um, let me get my little handy dandy. Hold on. Where's my arrows? Huh. But oh, this is going to work, too. 
you'll be able to see him. Okay, so no, that's still not what I'm looking for. One second, team. I'm looking for my little arrow thingy I be using. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's okay. I'll just use this cool little pencil. Okay, so all right. Let me see if it did it for me. Okay, it still didn't do it for me. Why is my pencil tripping? Stay in draw mode. Okay, no, I don't want to be in draw mode. All right, you guys, just give me one second. I want to be able, I want to make sure that you can, um, I want to be able to make sure that you can see what I'm talking about. So, oh, okay, I'll use a brush. Okay, you guys, so right here, right here, right here, a little bit like right there, right here these are bollinger bands and i'm gonna get into those bollinger bands in just a second and let you know how important they are but i just want you to be able to see them so where i got these little black lines at, this is showing you that these things right here are bollinger bands right so rule number two states that the price which is this, this whole candle has to penetrate at least two of the Bollinger Bands, you guys. And as you can see, it's penetrated through this one right here, this line right here, and it's penetrated through this line right here, you guys. Two Bollinger Bands. If anybody doesn't understand that last step, please comment in the comment bar if you did not understand the last step of the Bollinger Bands must penetrate two, I mean, price has to penetrate two of the Bollinger Bands. One, two. If you don't see that, I want you to comment 22 in the chat bar if you do not see what I just have done. I want to make sure it's, and, and no question is a stupid question. If you don't understand, let me know. So when you get out on your own, you can go ahead and catch pips. Okay. So I don't see anything. Okay. So you guys, judging off of confirmation number two, it has met the rules because it's penetrated through one and number two, right? So before I go into this third rule, let me tell you a little bit about the Bollinger Bands, you guys. Okay. So these Bollinger Bands are like rubber bands literally like rubber bands and so what they do is price likes to stay around this line right here this is your moving average line right here this red line going across all the way right here this red line right here where my finger is let me see if i can um make that a little bit bigger for you guys now i'm still learning how to maneuver through all these different little circles and all these little gadgets but let me get my pencil because that always works oh okay all right you guys so when i told you that you got to be patient for the harmonic scanner sometimes it times out and i don't know if it just timed me out or did it restart so i gotta put these bollinger bands back on so just give me uh one second so um, that's something to keep in mind, you guys. The uh, the boat, the uh, harmonic scanner will time out. So if you leave it for a long time on autopilot or something like that, it'll time out. I don't know if I somehow did a page refresh or something, but I got to put this back in here, you guys. So give me a second when I um, plug these coordinates right back in, which is cool because if somebody's just getting on, you know, they'll be able to see me input these Bollinger Bands. Okay. And as I as I do this, uh, Chris, I can't see anybody, but it, Chris, are you on the line? Can't I can't see if Chris is on this line. But if he's not, we definitely want to get him on here. All right, you guys, I'm changing up my style and stuff on here, so just give me one second. Trading this. It's patience, patience, patience. So 
Like I said, this is a beauty, beauty cosmetic that I'm doing with the style portion. Okay, cool. Now we're back on it. So as I was speaking about before, team, this red line right here is your moving average line. Price loves to stay around this red line. Let me show you an example. So what these Bollinger Bands do, these rubber bands, is they bounce price back to the moving average line, the MA line, right? As you can see, bounce, it hit it, it made it trickle down to the moving average line, right? You see it? And then it hit these Bollinger Bands right here, so we know it's going to go back up to this moving average line. So let me show you another example. Let me go back here. Let me see where it did some more bouncing. This is a 15-minute chart. Let me see. All right. It did it a little bit over here, too. Hold on. Okay, cool. So if you see it right here again, look. It hit the Bollinger Bands. The Bollinger Bands, it hit it. It boomerang right back to the moving uh, average line again. It hit it again, and it went back to the moving average line. So the only thing that I'm showing you guys is that price loves to stay around this red line right here. So now that you kind of know what the Bollinger Bands are, like I said, um, the Bollinger Bands also can be used as, like, you know, support and resistance as well. So let me go back to our original. Give me a second. Oh, my wife's acting like that. Oh. And if you're just getting on, please mute, mute, mute your lines. Oh, this is a this is a whole different pair. Okay. Um, if you could just mute your line, please, brother. I'm looking for another pair, you guys. Um, the pair that we were originally in, I don't remember. I don't remember what it was, and when it refreshed, it took me out. So if you guys can remember, uh, one second, man. Hold on. I apologize. I have to mute. I have to mute these lines. Uh, and I actually can't mute the line. Let me see. Cause I'm not. I'm not hosting this. Excuse me. Okay, hold on. P A uh, peace of love. Can you please mute your line, brother? Out in uh Miami, brother from Miami. Can you please mute your line? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay, you guys, I apologize for that. See, every time I have to tell everybody to mute they they line, it, it interferes. So, you know, please mute your line, you guys. This is something that we do always for these calls. We know to mute the lines. Okay. Let me see if somebody told me the pair that we were originally on, because now I'm going to have to kind of go back. And um, let me see. I don't see Chris. Okay, cool. I think it was the Bitcoin USD. Okay, Bitcoin USD. Let me see. I know it was a 15-minute chart. Uh, Bitcoin USD. Let's see. Um, Yeah, it was. It was that. So thank you. It definitely... It was that pair. Okay, cool. It was. Okay, you guys, we're back rolling. I didn't. I could. I explained to you what the Bollinger Bands do. Um, basically, when I was telling you to do 50, the this is this is the 50. So it's basically just measuring the measurement from the moving average line. Okay. So now let's go back into our rules. Thank you very much for letting me know um, what that was. Okay, you guys. Great. Thanks for your patience. So we got both of our confirmations. Now our next confirmation says that price confirm its direction. So what does that mean, Isis? What does that exactly mean? Before I tell you what this means, you guys, let me know what kind of trade this is. Is this a sale or a buy? Judging on how it's set up, is this a sale or a buy? If you could just comment in the comment bar and let me know. If this is a sale or is this a buy? Let me see what we got going on. Okay, I don't know. How do you choose the pair? Okay. 
sell, sell, sell. Okay, you guys, if it's a sale, why is it a sale, though? How do you know this is a sale? For all our new people, for all our community members that's on this call right now, how can you let them know? Okay, okay, okay. Somebody let me know. They said the, the bag's at the bottom. The money is at the bottom, right? The money is at the bottom. Cool. Yes, yes. Yes, test that knowledge. I love it. I love it because we are bouncing back to the MA line. Okay, I like that as well too. Okay, the the most easiest way, regardless of the uh, MA line right now, is that we know that the take profit is on the bottom. The money bag is at the bottom. Your stop loss is at the top. Anytime your stop loss is at the top and your money's at the bottom, we know it's a sale, you guys. We know that it is a bearish type of market. So our third, our third rule is that since this is a sale, this next candle right here needs to indicate a sale. It has. Look, it's red. We know red is a uh, bearish. We know it's a bearish type of market, right? So look, number one, price must enter the entry point, which it has. Look, it, it's pushed through this right here. The second one says that we have to penetrate at least two of our Bollinger Bands, one and two, which we have. The third one says price must confirm the direction. It has confirmed the direction because look, so technically, technically, once this um, candle right here Hey, Stacy, can you mute your line, please? So uh, technically, I would wait. I would get in right here. But you see, this thing right here is still going to work. It's still moving. I would wait till it closes, and it needs to close. Then I would get in, right? Because this is already closed, but I will hop in about right here. I will hop in about right here because we already have our confirmation. Right, so let me see what we what we got. Any questions? Mute your line. Yes, please, please mute the lines. Please, please. Okay, so this thing right here is still doing its magic, but once this is a 15 minute chart, so it's not gonna take all day to do its magic. But um, I will still wait to see and get in on this this candle right here. Some people will go ahead and wait when this candle closes and get in. You know what I'm saying? But now. Trade at your own risk, disclaimer, trade at your own risk, but technically you could get in this trade. But before you get in this trade, there's some things we need to know about managing the trade. So I hope everybody has this information because I'm going to delete it. Okay, so this has made all three of our rules, you guys. I would hypothetically get in, right? But let me tell you some other things and I'll give you some other indicators. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Now, let me go ahead and tell you about this take profit. So when we're trading on a 15-minute chart, and if somebody could put this in the comment box for me, when we're trading on a 15-minute chart, you want to do 10 pips and dip. I don't care if take profit one's right here. I don't care if take profit two and take profit three is right here. When you're doing the 15-minute chart, 10 pips and dip. If we are doing the 15 minute chart, you guys, how many pips are we gonna get? I want y'all to put it in the comment bar because I want to make sure everybody's following me. If we're on the 15 minute chart, what you gonna do? Let's see, let's see, let's see who's yes, dip out, baby. Dip out, dip out, 15 and dip. Okay, so what we would do is we'll take this handy dandy measurer right here, and what we would do is I would go from the body. I would go from the body and I would measure 10 pips. Hold on. Let me see. 10 pips from here. 52. So it'll be uh six nine. Oh, it's moving around, but it'll be six nine fifty-five if you add 10 pips. To where the current price is right now. Just add 10 pips to this number right here. So 6955. Uh 
I'm sorry, 50, 55, yes, 55. Lord, don't judge me on my math skills, y'all. Okay, so 55, right? That's 10 pips from, from that point. So if you wanted to, you could do that. But hold on, let me tell you about this stop loss. So different brokers, different spreads, you guys. So what I would do is when I'm selling, I want y'all to listen to this, write it down, put it in the comment bar. When I am selling my stop loss, I'm going to add 10 pips to my stop loss. So instead of my stop loss being right here, I would have it a little bit up here, 10 pips more. Okay? Because different brokers, different spreads, right? This is hot FX, I mean hot Forex. A different broker might have a slightly different spread. So you want to give yourself some wiggle room. Okay. So when you are selling, what are you going to do with your, uh, your stop loss? Let me know. Put it in the comment bar. Let me make sure everybody's following. If you are selling, are you going to add to your stop loss or are you going to subtract from your stop loss? Okay. Add, add, add to the stop loss. Yes, yes, yes. And know how I remember this because if I know if I'm if I'm if I'm selling I'm thinking about subtraction so I automatically know in my mind that my take profit is going to be um adding 10 pips if I was buying I would subtract uh seven pips not 10 I apologize seven pips seven pips okay I um I greatly apologize for that. I'm still thinking about 10 pips and dip. I'm still thinking about getting into this trade. I apologize. So it's seven pips. You're gonna um you're going to add seven pips if it's a sell. You're going to subtract seven pips if it's a buy. Now that I have put in that clarification, let me make sure everybody's tracking because I definitely don't want to confuse anybody. So if it's a sell, we're going to add how many to our stop loss. Seven, yes, thank you, thank you, seven, not 10, I apologize. Yes, seven, 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 seven. Okay, you guys, seven. So with that being said, now you could go ahead on your demo, on your demo, let's go ahead and do 10 pips and dip, right? If that's if you want to. I'm not putting a gun to your head saying you got to, but if you would like, it out. Now, while y'all do that, we got our three rules, but let me tell you some additional rules. Now, mind you, I'm still going to get in on these three rules, but for some additional confirmations, we're going to be looking at our RSI, which is our relative strength, strength index right here. You're not going to change anything. But when price is above 70, which I'm going to show you in a second, like right here, let me move this bad boy. So right here, delete that. Delete that. All right, you guys. Look, D candle, price candle. Didn't quite make it above 70. Let me see. 70 will be about right there. Okay. So whenever price is above 70, that means that it is overbrought, indicating that the market will soon be going on a sale because it's overbrought, right? And so when it's below 30, Hold on. I got to wait for this to move out the way. So I can't really see. Let me wait to this. Wait, no. Cancel. Okay. My bad. This message was at the bottom messing me up. So when it's below 30, team, let me see. When it's below 30, we know that it, the market has been overbrought, right? Judging off of this candle right here. OK, so the D candle almost hit 70, but it didn't. So that's just another indicator that I use. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to get in the trade because it has passed all three of our rules. But I'm just saying additional like it's like putting a cherry on top of the cake. You know, you got the icing up there and it's good with the icing. But when you put a couple of cherries on that bad boy, 
tough, puts that cake, puts that cake on top, right? So that's just another indicator that I would use. So let me see if we have any questions. If you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the comment bar because I'm about to check. But as we do that, I want to get into this trade. I want to see what this trade is like. So don't be scared. Get in that demo account. Practice it. See how it works for you. You know, see how it works for you. So as the questions roll in, I want to real quick go ahead and um, I want to look at this trade myself and go ahead and, and input it. So give me a second because I'm over here working on um, – my oh excuse me my 10 pips and dip okay now this is bitcoin too so keep in mind cryptocurrency moves kind of fast right so let me see six nine let me see i want to add 10 pips so that's gonna be five zero 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 do my stop loss i'm going to be Adding seven pips to my stop loss. Just gonna make that. Uh, that's three. Thirty-nine. All right, that's good. Okay, so sell ten pips. All right, cool. All right, you guys. So I just inputted the trade. Took some trades earlier on the harmonic scanner, and I'm already in the blue, so I love that. All right, so let me see if anybody has any questions before I move on. I know I speak kind of fast. I'm learning to speak slow. Okay, thanks for the clarification. <laughs> no, I ain't changed the rule. My bad, my bad. I was just, my mind was hooked on that 10 pip and dip. <laughs> Have been here, Claire. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Shannon, she on it, man. She got these notes up here like it ain't nothing. Thank you. Okay. 30 over broad. Thank you. Okay. Okay, cool. Can we see how you enter the trade? Um. Okay. I'm going to have to log in from my cell phone to do that. Um. Give me one second. I'm I'm gonna try to um I'm gonna try to uh, uh get on here and do it from my cell phone. While I'm doing that, if anybody is on uh Chris's team, if you guys can please just reach out to him because he's supposed to be joining me today on this call. All right. All right. I'm echoing. Hold on. Okay, my mind, my mind is muted. Okay. All right. Um, damn, that's weird. Hold on. Mm. All right, you guys, to be honest, uh, let me see. It's okay if it's too complicated. Okay. Yeah, I think... Um, or I think um, when I try to do it on my cell phone, it's making the echo sound, and it won't let me share my um, it won't let me share both screens. But we'll definitely if you anybody needs help on how to even enter a trade, um, please get with me. I also would say if somebody would like to. Um, I definitely want to make sure everybody's doing this right. If somebody would like to share their screen, like their MetaTrader 4, really quick, um, I'm definitely open for that. If not, then I'll make sure next time I set it up in a way where you can um, see the trade. But basically what you would do is you would go to that pair, you will go on your MetaTrader 4, and you will find the uh, BT uh, uh, Bitcoin um, USD. You have to sometimes add it if it's not already on there. And you would just basically go to your take profit and you know enter 
10 pips from this, and then you would just basically put your stop loss in. Um, I know sometimes we're more visual than anything, so like I said, if you get with me after the call, I can show you how to input it into your demo account, okay, you guys? So um, let me see if I have any more questions before I move on to the next thing. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, how do you enter a trailing stop loss? Okay, cool. I'm definitely going to get on that in a second. Okay, so before I get on the trailing stop loss, because I still think that I'm going to need my um, – Meditrator 4 for that. Let me let y'all know something else about this stop loss. So when you're trading on an hour chart, the four hour chart and the day chart, we're going to make it to take profit one. Okay. So when you're trading, hypothetically, if this was the hour chart, instead of doing 10 pips and dip, we would do, we would take our profit at the TP1 or the MA line, whichever one comes first. So in this example, the TP, which is right here, take profit, right here, is this line right here. It's before the moving average line. So if this was a hour, the four hour, or the daily chart, I would go take my take profit on take profit one. Did that make sense? If you guys are trading on the hour, the four hour, or the day, what are you going to do to manage that trade? What are you going to do? Where are you going to take your profit at? I want to make sure everybody knows. If you just put that in the chat bar, I want to make sure that I wasn't confusing and that everybody is tracking. Okay, okay, let me see. Take profit one, take profit one. Yes, yes. Y'all better get it. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. I love it, I love it, I love it. Yes, 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 okay? Take profit one or the MA line, whichever one comes first. Now, the stop loss is the same. The stop loss is the same. Just like you would do your stop loss, seven seven pips plus or minus, it's the same thing with this uh with the hour chart, with the four hour chart, and with the day chart. The only thing that's changing is your take profit, okay? So I definitely wanted to put that uh, part in there. Now, with the uh, trailing stop, somebody asked me about the trade, this trail stop. Um, what I really want to do is, is going to be kind of hard for me to explain it without having my demo up. So I'm going to go back to the questions and I'm going to write that question down and I will definitely make sure on our next class that I'll have it in a way where you guys can see the, um, see me enter a trailing stop loss and also see me enter a trade. So give me a second. Um, I need to put this in my notes so I will remember to um, teach you guys that next time. Uh, trailing stop, trailing stop loss, and how to enter a trade on the demo. Okay, enter trade on demo. All right. Okay. All right, so I got those questions down. Uh, let me see who asked me that. Okay. Yep. Okay. So yeah, brother, I'm gonna um I'm gonna do that on next class because I, I want it I want it to be visual. Let me see. Please forgive me, guys. I have to run. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, Shannon. Thank you very much for paying attention and dropping those notes, goddess. Be a sale. Will this will this be a sale by the market? Yeah, this is gonna be a sale. We spoke about this earlier. The money is on the bottom, the stop loss is on the top. All right, guys, so we're going we're gonna to go to another pair. We're going to analyze another pair, and then we're going to speak about diversions, okay? We're going to speak about diversions. Okay. Let me just check this out and check on this diversion and see. So basically, guys, what diversions helps you see is it helps you see how the market is flowing. So hold on. Okay, so it's hard to tell, but if you look at this X, 
and you look at this D, you can kind of see. Let me see if I can try to retrace that. Let me see trend line. Let me see. Let me take this green. Uh, should I use green? Yeah, let me use this green. Make it dark. Okay. Uh, if you can kind of see. There it goes. Okay. Okay. No, I can't. That's, that's not a good color. Hold on. Let me see if I can change it to yellow. Let's see. Okay. Let's see yellow. Still can't really see it. Oops. Okay, so you can kind of see this green line that's going down like this, right? So how you could check for diversions, because diversions is another way to also give yourself a cherry on top for this for these three rules. Keep in mind, we are using the three rules, but now I'm just showing you other confirmations that you can really use to make that decision. So what I do to be able to measure the diversions is I come here and I draw a straight line through X all the way down right here to this point. So let me show you the vertical line, right? I do the same thing over here with D, right? With D, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a trend line from this point to that point. I thought it was. Okay. All right. Okay, you guys. So, as we can see, if you look right here, as I stated, this line is going down it's going on a kind of like a downtrend this right here is going on an uptrend now your I RSI and your chart should be reading the same type of trend it should be identical but when it's not identical we know that there's about to be a change in the market so what I do before I answer any questions um let me see if I have my uh, cheat sheet. I got a little cheat sheet. Um, give me one second. Okay. And if anybody is not added to our Facebook messenger group, I mean our Facebook uh, group, Trust the Bands, you can add yourself or you can let me know. Um, I definitely have to say you do need to be an active member with IML to be able to be in this group. That means your account needs to be active. You need to go ahead and pay your monthly fee if you haven't. Okay, so let me go to the little cheat sheet that I got up. Just give me one second. Messages for days. Okay. All right, and I'm going to have to probably end this soon. Okay, I got a call. Okay, so this is the cheat sheet, you guys. And if you're in the group, you'll have this. So this just lets you know about the reversals, about the about the uh, diversion reversals, right? So let's see what kind of pattern we have. So we go back to our harmonic scanner. We see that this is kind of going down, and this is going up. So judging off of the downward move and the upward move, let's see what we have. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm looking at this again. Boop. Okay, down and up. Okay, so see down. Okay. So hold on. Okay, you guys. I know it's kind of blurry. I know it is, and I apologize. I don't know why it's blurry. But um, if you can kind of see, th the first line is going down. Our indicator is going up. So your indicator is showing higher highs, and your trade is showing 
the lower low. So let me go back and show y'all. Look, it's going down, and this one's going up. When we go back here, it's going down, and this was going up. So this is a bearish divergence. Bearish divergence. So what does that mean, Isis? That means that it's going on sale. That's what that means. It means it's going on sale. That means that the market is about to do a correction. This should, this should be going down like this should, but it's not. This is going in the right direction. It's going down just like a sale. This one right here is not, but it's showing that the market is going to be going on a reverse to a bearish move. Okay. Now, keep in mind. Is the RSI always right? No. Is the uh, divergence always correct? No, it's not. But it definitely does help you in the market. It's kind of like another confirmation. That's what the, these indicators do. You know, the they're basically showing you, they're giving you the trades, and then you have to use your brain, and you have to be able to figure out like, okay, divergence is popping, the RSI is popping, my three rules is popping. This is definitely looking like a good trade. So hold on, let me take some questions real quick. Thanks, very visual person. Okay, how did you get the vertical line to go through the RSI? Okay, um, Young L, to answer your question, you had asked me how do you get to the brokers? You go to the brokers by going over here. These are the brokers. So you just simply, dang, every time I do that, it Oh man, it oh, I reset it, but it's okay, right? So this is how you get to the brokers. You would just oh, that's how it resets every time I push this. Okay, so you would um just go here for the brokers, young Gail. I know you asked about this, so the brokers are right here. So okay, how did you get the vertical line to go through the RSI? Okay, let me show you. So I'm glad that we finished up with that trade, you guys, because now I have to go back through and put my Bollinger Bands in. So if you click this little button right here, you guys, it's probably going to refresh it, and you're going to have to put them Bollinger Bands back in. So I'm going to show you how I did that vertical line. Just give me a second to put my um, coordinates right back in again. Like I said, you got to be patient with this scanner. So don't be getting all frustrated, wanting to throw your computer and stuff. Just have patience and do it again. Just like if you fall off your bike, you're going to get back up. You're going to try again. Okay? So as I do this, if you have any other questions, go ahead and drop them in the chat. We're going to be finishing this segment up, too. I wanted to show some other things to you guys, but my partner, Chris, is not on the line today. So he has some special sauce that he wanted to show you guys. I'm not even sure what it was. I wanted to see myself. <laughs> so um, I might have to end this a little early. Got a call to get to. So, uh, and this will be recorded as, oh, well, I hope so. If not, it's recorded on my Facebook Live. So how far to Facebook Live? Okay. All right, so let me show you how I got that vertical line, right, to, to measure my diversions, right? So I went here. Let me see who asked that question. Make sure y'all paying attention. James, okay, pay attention, James. Okay, cool. So you're going to go right here where it says trend line. You're going to hit this arrow. You're going to go to the vertical line. Click on your vertical line. Let me move this out the way. Click on your vertical line. This is going to pop up. Now, you could trade. You could change the color to your liking. I'm going to change it to red. Here, it thickens up the line so you can see it thicker. So, you know, you can pick how thick you want it. I'm going to keep it right there. What we're going to do is we're going to go from the X point. We're going to draw a line. You're just going to click on it, right? You just click. You go back, click on it vertical again. You see it's highlighted. That means that it's going to, it, it, it has set basically, because it's highlighted. Boom, click it again. You see the highlight's gone? You got to click it again so you can get the other half. And I'm going to answer questions in just a second, so just hang tight. That's how I got my vertical line, James. Did that make sense? 
If you could just comment in the comment bar, James, if that made sense. Cool, cool. Thank. Okay, cool. Indeed. Yes, yes, indeed. I love it. Okay, so let's check out a. Let's go through the whole thing one more time, you guys, before I get off this call and take any questions. Let's look for another pair that we could potentially have the opportunity to get in. Now, keep in mind, there's certain times the market is popping. We know London session. We know the New York session, the Asian session. So there might not be so many trades right now at this time, but that's why I'm giving y'all the, the skills now. So later on tonight or whatever session you're going to be trading, you're going to be able to take these same skills. Okay, so give me one second. I'm going to do one more trade, you guys, one more trade, and I'm going to have to get up off of here and take some questions. Um, if y'all could just give me one second, I'm going to have to text my my next to know that I'm still giving the sauce to my team. Uh, so y'all give me one second. Let me just text my next appointment. Let them know I'm going to be a little bit late. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So let's go back and let's see if this trade will be a good trade to set to start. And let's do an hour chart. I want to do a. I want to do an hour. I I used to scalp a lot, but on a harmonic scanner, I definitely love to uh, get the hour in just because you know it's the whole. You get more pips out of it. You get to also examine the market a little bit more. So, um. I love to trade the hour, but you don't have to. You could trade 15 minutes with the same strategy. Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay. All right, let's check out this one, y'all. So our first rule is price has to enter through the entry point. Look, they go one entry, they go two entry, right? Look at this candle. This is price candle. This price candle made it through that entry, and it made it through that entry. It made it through both entries. Remember, I said it doesn't have to make it through both, but if it does hit that second confirmation, that just gives me like a more reassurance type of feeling, right? So we have made rule one because rule one states we have it has the price. This whole thing right here, D to the to the body, has to enter entry point. It has, you guys. Okay, look. It went through. Came up. It went through. Our second rule is price has to penetrate at least two of our Bollinger Bands. Family, look at it. It touched this Bollinger Band and it touched this Bollinger Band. Right? Can everybody see that? Right here. If you don't see it, I want you to type, I don't see it, Isis. Right? There's a Bollinger Band. Look, it runs all the way across. Boom. There goes another Bollinger Band. Boom, it has penetrated two of our Bollinger Bands, right? Okay, last rule. Price, you have to see the confirmation of it. Mm, excuse me, of this of the market. So we know this is a sale. Why? Money on the bottom, right? So since the money's on the bottom, this next candle needed to be an indication of a Bear, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, a bearish candle, a red candle, a sale candle. And it is. Look, it is. So, like I said, some people would have came in right here. But since this is an hour chart, I would have first wanted to make sure this cleared up, though. I would have waited maybe about 15 minutes to closing. 15 minutes closing before I got in this because we know this could change at any time, right? So judging on this trade, how this trade is set up right now, would y'all have gotten to this trade? If you was to, if you would get in this trade, say I would. If you wouldn't get in this trade, be like, nah, I wouldn't, and I I, I want to know why.
Would anybody get into this trade right now? Judging off of our three rules, you know, penetrating through the entry point, um, penetrating through two Bollinger Bands, it's showing the confirmation of a sale like it should. Would y'all get into this trade? Just comment in the uh, chat bar. Let me see what we're working with. Thank you for breaking this down. Okay. I know that the time is located at the bottom. Oh, you guys are going fast. Okay. But the bottom, but how do you see how long the current candlestick is positioned? Okay. That is a good question. Okay. Jatella says she'll get in. Okay, cool. Now, let me go back to Miss King's question. She wanted to know, thank you for breaking it. Okay. But how do you see how long? You know what? That's a good question. Because we know on trading view, same pair. Okay, hold on. I'm going to show you what I do, Miss King. So, and see, I grafted my whole harmonic pattern here. And I have to show you all that on the next call on how to graph your own harmonic pattern on trading view. Hello? Hey, what's going on, Chris? Yeah, we hear you, Chris. Dope, 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 Chris. I'm glad that you can hop on here. Let me finish up this last little part, and then I'm going to give it to you. Yes, we're hearing the echo, Chris. Okay, thank you, Chris. Let me let me finish this last part up, Chris, and I'm gonna uh, pass the mic to you. So to answer Miss King's question, she wanted to know about the timing, right? She was asking. So you know, right here on Trading View, it tells you the time countdown, right? You can see it's telling you that this candle right here got 24 minutes and 52 seconds to um before it's fully formed. But on the harmonic scanner. It doesn't have that countdown. So, Miss King, what I would do is I'll just also have up my trading view to be able to uh, check that out and do any analysis. And like I said, next week, I'll be showing you guys how to graph your own harmonic pattern onto trading view. This is what I was working on today. So, before I gave it to Chris, just let me make sure I heard people say that they would get into this trade. Okay, cool, because I would got into this trade too. And as you notice, if we would have went on, like, let's act like none of this was here yet. Let's, hold on. Let's act like none of this was here. You couldn't even really see the rest of that stuff, right? My computer's tripping. But let's just act like you didn't. As you can see, our chart, it has made take profit one, and it made it down to take profit two. So if you would have gotten to this trade and you would have went to take profit one, you would have made it. Now, I always say, beginners, just getting used to the thing, please just do take profit one or the M MA line. The more you start getting professional in this, the more you start getting confident in it, then you can go back and, and do take profit two and take profit three. Not at the beginning, okay? Don't be greedy and do it. But Chris has another way to show you. So I hope that kind of clarify any everything for anybody. Before I pass it to Chris, does anybody have any questions from, from me on this part that I just showed you before I pass the mic uh, to Chris? 
Anybody, anybody. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, my, I got an echo. I can hear myself echoing. Um, I can't hear you, but I can hear me echoing. Cool, cool. So, so as Chris pulls up his scanner, I want you to Facebook group. It's called Trust the Bands. Um, please make sure that you are an active member because if you're not active, you're not going to get in this group right here. So make sure you're active. Trust the Bands. We also have a Telegram group where we drop um, signals on the harmonic scanner. But once again, you want to make sure that your account is active if you want to get those um, signals because it's not fair to other people that are paying monthly um, to, you know, to be able to pay and get these signals versus people who's not paying. I definitely know I got an echo. My bad, you guys. So um, thank you very much for tuning in and watching this this portion right here. We're going to wait for Chris to get his stuff hooked up, and we're going to start on this next uh, portion. <laughs>